Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio. In this video, I have four days to complete the biggest project I've ever attempted, and that is building a giant timber frame staircase from a tree. This build technically started about four or five years ago when I asked my friend Aaron up at Gobi Walnut if he'd be willing to custom mill me a giant beam and a ton of stair treads from a single tree so I could try my hand at building a timber frame staircase. And he said, none of that's a problem, but the beam's gonna take a little while to dry. And the rule is generally about one year of drying for every inch of thickness. And this beam is 10 inches by 12 inches thick. So technically it'll probably never be dry in the very center. But as I understand it, this is just kind of how it goes with timber frame projects is you cut it, you mill it, you let it dry for a couple of years, and then it's fine to use. So it's been about four or five years now and I'm finally ready to start this project. Some of you may be wondering when I'm gonna finally break down and buy a trailer, but I'll give you a pro tip. You don't need a trailer so long as you have a standard bed pickup and a bunch of red flags, because everybody knows once you put a red flag on it, your load is legal. A couple months ago, a friend of mine from Oklahoma called me up and said, hey, I recently retired. I'd love to get out to Oregon, hang out. We can just relax, drink some beer. It doesn't have to be any big thing. And I said, how about instead of any of that, other than the beer drinking, you help me build a staircase instead. And I believe his exact words were, Fuck yes. So enter Johnny Lambert, AKA Johnny Builds. Not dangerous, we got plenty of room, right? Yeah. Uh, it's adorable. You sure you gotta turn it on? I think so, yeah. There you go. All right, I joke, but it'll probably take me as long to start this as it will for you to cut that. <laughs> if you don't recognize Johnny's face, I bet you'll recognize some of his thumbnails. Johnny has one of the biggest woodworking channels on YouTube and has agreed to come work for me for free but this is Monday and his flight leaves Friday morning. So we basically have Monday through Thursday to complete this staircase. And I guess it doesn't mean that I can't keep working on it, but I don't have an extra set of hands after he leaves. So the pressure is really on to get as much done in these four days as possible. And it's gonna be tricky for me because I can be kind of lazy sometimes when I just work for myself. But having Johnny here is that motivation that I need to just see how much I can get done in those four days. And I bet we can finish it. I don't have a ton of experience building staircases. So far, the entirety of that experience is building a step that leads into my shed, but that one turned out pretty good, so I think I'm gonna be okay. And I'm actually not flying completely blind now. My video guy, Scott, recently said that he wanted to learn to render, and I said, I want to pay you to learn to render. So he's been doing all kinds of projects for me on the digital front, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, can you build me a digital staircase? Here's the specs, here's what it needs to fit, and he said, Maybe, I think was his exact words, and sure enough he did, so I'm not completely blind here. We are going based on some plans that Scott has drawn up for me. We decided to process all of the stair treads first, and I had Scott make plans for three and a half inch thick stair treads, which is super thick, but Gobi actually milled these at over four inches, which is awesome that they weren't too short, but it left a ton of material that needed removing, and that's why I used the bandsaw to actually fillet off a piece before putting it all through the planer. And here they are sitting at about three and a half inches, or I should say exactly three and a half inches because we're professionals, but it's still a little too big for my table saw and I had to get really creative when it comes to cutting this down. And also remember, this is the very first stair tread. This is not a compilation. This is taking a very long time. And already I'm getting a little bit nervous about that Thursday deadline of completing this because we are over an hour at this point into this one single stair tread. And I believe we have 12 or was it 13 stair treads? Either way, we have a lot more stair treads than this. One down. We got, how long was that? It's probably like an hour and a half. We can take a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is your project, but don't you have like an industrial shop that we could take these all to and process them? I do. I thought about that. Uh, I think it's more realistic in these videos just to show the whole process. And I feel like it's almost cheating to like just take everything in an industrial shop and have them do the work for me. I would say that I held out for probably another 10 minutes or so of processing the next stair tread before I looked at Johnny and said, I've got a great idea. I know an industrial shop that can process all this wood much faster. Let's go there instead. And so that's where we are now. Creative Woodworking Northwest up in Portland, Oregon. 
Uh, I mentioned that Johnny has a large YouTube channel, but also that he recently retired. And to clarify, he didn't retire from YouTube because I don't think anybody has ever actually retired from YouTube at this point. And Johnny was a police officer for over 20 years and he retired last year. But over the last five or six years, he's been growing his YouTube channel. And I don't know if this was his intention from the beginning, but Johnny was setting himself up for the most amazing retirement possible because when you work for someone else for 20 years, it can be kind of taxing and I can't imagine a better life doing what I'm doing now and what Johnny's doing now, working for yourself, just doing something that you absolutely love. So about a year ago, I started working with some other YouTubers on creating a course to help people find that same success that myself and Johnny have found on YouTube. And while subscribers are cool, they're super fun, they're not gonna pay your retirement. So this course is much more than just building it and gaining those subscribers. Our goal is that anybody that takes this course and takes it seriously should be able to generate a minimum of $1,000 a month as part of their YouTube side hustle. Or maybe they wanna go full-time like Johnny. This is the course that's gonna help you skip that learning curve and should pay for itself many times over. I'm not sure that OSHA would be the biggest fan of a customer using a wedge to prevent the table saw from binding, but at least I'm not doing it in flip-flops this time. And that one stair tread we processed in my small shop, or maybe you'll call it a medium shop, or a shop smaller than the one here, that took us about an hour and a half. Everything that you see here, we accomplished in about two and a half hours. So I was really glad that I had the idea of heading up to this industrial shop. And yes, we did not forget the red flag of immunity. This is where I feel like things got really fun because it was a little bit boring just squaring everything up. But right now we have a 15 foot long, about 10 inch by 12 inch fur beam, a bunch of perfectly square treads. Now we just have to make them look like a staircase and have everything fit together like a puzzle. And one of the tools that I bought like six months ago, but I've never used is this skill saw here. And this isn't sponsored and you'll hear why in just a second, but I've been so excited to use this because look at it, it looks freaking awesome. You can cut up to 16 inches with it but it works just like a circular saw. So I let Johnny have the honors on this first one and it did cut really quickly, but then I realized it is complete garbage. Who could ever use it? The cut quality is deplorable. I wouldn't cut a two by four with that. So I basically have a $700 saw that I will never use again. So if you want one, let me know and I'll probably just give it to you, but I'm not into shipping, so you'll have to find me in person. But anyway, went back, got the track saw out and this is where we're gonna have to be a little creative because I'm gonna have to make four cuts and then finish it off with a handsaw. I didn't know how close I was. <laughs> Through the rendering process, Scott became kind of a staircase expert, which was good that one of us was, because apparently there's a lot to keeping a staircase structurally sound as well as easy to walk up and down on. And we came up with this little jig that should help lay out all the cut lines and keep everything nice and organized. However, ran into a little bit of a problem here. So we were all getting pretty confident here that everything was lining up perfect until we got to the last step and it was short and we couldn't figure out how. And it turns out, I'd marked the wrong side because I didn't think about it mattering. So our template is sound and the math is sound, but me knowing which side to use was not sound. So Johnny and I are gonna erase everything we just did and flip it around and do it the proper way. So this should line up on the point? Yes, it should. Yeah. That's pretty close. Okay. So Scott's rendering showed us that one cut should be made at right about 46 degrees. It was actually like 46 point something, but we don't have a tool capable of getting more accurate than roughly one degree. So we're gonna cut one cut at 46 degrees and the other cut at 44 degrees. Both those add up to 90, so that should make sense. But again, we're all kind of just flying blind here, hoping that I'm reading and following those rendering instructions correctly, but it seems like it should make sense. We made all of our 46 degree cuts at one time. Now I adjusted the saw over to 44 degrees and now we're gonna make all of these cuts going in the opposite direction. And you're probably starting to notice that this saw isn't quite big enough to complete this cut. And even that giant 18 inch beam saw that Gobi was using at the start of the video wouldn't have been able to complete this cut. So what I'm really using these for is just kind of a guide so I can get my saw started and then finish them off with a handsaw. And we're gonna have to be a little creative. I bought a couple of different handsaws, but I do think it's also an interesting opportunity to see who's better with a handsaw, me or Johnny. East versus West. Home Depot's finest versus 
some other one. Let's go. All right, Scott, start us off. All right, ready, set, go. Ready, Johnny? Shit. <laughs> we had barely started on day two by the time we got going with this sawing, so I might have been a bit naive, but I felt like we were way ahead of schedule and we were going to have no problem meeting that Thursday deadline. However, after I got into sawing a few of these, I realized it was a bit more physically demanding than I'd originally anticipated. The one thing that kept me going was just how fun these were to knock out when you got all the way there, and Johnny can attest to that. Because yeah, that part was pretty fun, and I got desperate enough that I pulled an old saw out, and I'm gonna see how this goes. What do you think? Did it work? No. <laughs> <laughs> Before the YouTube hand tool police start frantically typing on their keyboards, yes, I know this whaleback saw is only designed to be used as a rip saw, which means it's supposed to cut with the grain, and yes, I was using it to cut across the grain, but occasionally we use a tool in a way other than their intended use, and occasionally it actually works. And so in this case, I've found the best tool for the job is the tool that accomplishes the job you need it to. And it's like the people that tell me, a screwdriver is never supposed to be used to open a paint can, but somehow I'm some sort of paint can savant because I can open a paint can with a screwdriver. So save your judgment, I'm using it and it actually works. I work with my hands basically every single day, but there aren't very many days like this when I have like a legit six hours straight of pretty back-breaking physical labor. And I'm not complaining, this day just gave me a whole new appreciation for the real laborers out there. Because there's a big difference between someone like me or an electrician and the guy that's actually working a shovel for eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And trust me, you get a whole new appreciation for them when you actually do even like half of one of their normal day's work. I would say that most of the time I want to put a bow tie into a piece of furniture, I just cut the one bow tie on my bandsaw and then inlay it by hand. And there's a couple of times when I prefer to use a jig like this one. And one of those is when I'm working with softwood. And this is fur, so this is very soft wood. And believe it or not, softwood is actually more difficult to do an inlay in than hardwood because when you put a chisel into the softwood, it tends to kind of mash it in or bend it over, whereas the hardwood stays very, very sharp. So using a router eliminates that problem. And the other time I like to use a jig is when I have a whole bunch of them to do. And yes, I have a ton of bow ties to put into this big staircase, which is why I'm kind of batching them out here using the jig and then cutting them all out with my bandsaw. If you've never used a bow tie jig before or an inlay kit, they're actually really fun and pretty satisfying to use because you can kind of trick your friends and family into thinking you're a better woodworker than you are. But the one thing you need is a really good inlay kit for your router. And the one that I'm using there is by Whiteside. I highly recommend that one because it will give you a perfectly tight fit. And as for the jig, I'd love to say that you have to use this one because I offer it for sale, but you really don't because the only reason I had this jig made is because I thought all the other bow tie jigs out there made kind of an ugly bow tie. They just left kind of a lumpy dog bone looking bow tie. I wanted something a little bit more modern, a little bit more slick, so that's why I had that one made, but it by no means is gonna be any stronger than any other jig you can get out there. So if you like the look of one at your local Rockler on Amazon, by all means, go with that one. This is a timber slick, which means, yes, big chisel is how that's loosely translated. Um, I figured since I'm building with timbers that I needed a timber slick. Uh, I guess it's a chisel you don't use a hammer on. Looks cool. It is cool. I don't know how to use it though. So let's see how it works. Okay. Ooh.
Oh no. You didn't see that. <laughs> I'll be honest, I follow somebody called, I think it's Shelter Institute, who does this for a living, and they make the best shavings where it's just like across the end grain and perfect curls. That's what I envisioned this would be. <laughs> and this is more just like scraping at it with a butter knife. I finally remembered what I'm good at, and that is throwing power tools at problems. So got the belt sander out, cleaned up all of those horrible timber slick marks, and made it look like I actually know what I'm doing. And this went pretty quick, but the next step, unfortunately, is gonna be a nice combination of power tools and, yes, hand tools. When it comes to attaching the stair tread to the stringer itself, I probably could have attached it as it is right now and it would have been perfectly fine. However, I really wanted to notch it into the stringer and one, it's gonna look super cool and two, it's probably gonna be a lot safer since the stair tread is gonna be locked in by the stringer itself, not just however we attach it from the top. So this was a lot more work though and I was really happy to have Johnny there because he kind of guided that track saw for me. Scott actually came up with the idea of using the oscillating tool for cutting down close because we had a real hard time with that initially. And again, this is just a little bit time consuming, but this part was so satisfying. If you are anything like me and love woodworking sounds, medium to heavy sarcasm, and projects that range from woolly mammoth tusk restorations to extending dining tables to weird little end tables, then you might actually like some more of my content. And I would really appreciate it if you do want to see more of that content if you hit that subscribe button. We are about halfway through day three of the four days that I have Johnny to help me with this staircase, and we're finally to the point of no return, meaning we are ripping out the old staircase. So the next day and a half or so will determine whether I have a super cool mono stringer timber frame staircase or an aluminum ladder for accessing my upstairs. And hopefully Johnny's there to see the end, but at this point, it's probably about a coin flip. You tested and you're 100% sure this is going to fit over there. The only thing left that could maybe be messed up at this point is Scott's calculations. So Scott, according to your calculations, is it going to fit? Uh, according to the calculations, it should. How, are, you good at, are you good at math? I'm not, but the computer is pretty good at it. Okay. Uh, no, if this gets up there and it's like a foot short, <laughs> it'd be funny to somebody, <laughs> not me, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm a little nervous because this is the last thing that could go wrong. Okay. Uh, uh, can we clean the top step? Yeah, that's what we're going to clean up. Scott's mask? Not bad. Well done, Scott. When I was younger, I had a friend that would give us the most wildly untrue statements and present them as fact. And if you question those statements, his response was always the same. He would always reply, Think about it. Like one time he told us that karate guys weren't allowed in the UFC. And when I questioned him on it, he goes, think about it. And I go, I am thinking about it. And I think that sounds like bullshit. And he goes, no, think about it. They hit too hard. They would kill guys in the UFC. I was like, I don't think there's anything to back up that statement. But he would always do this. And it eventually became kind of a running joke amongst our friends. When somebody was saying something that sounded maybe a bit too much like bullshit, somebody else in the group would go, yeah, yeah, think about it. So the reason I tell you this story is all of the structural engineering of this project is done with think about it logic. If you ask me, is that beam strong enough? Think about it. Look how freaking thick it is. Are those stair treads thick enough? Think about it. They're three and a half inches thick. You can't break one of those. Is the home inspector or the, or the county going to come and bother you? Think about it. Why would they bother me? So 
The point is, don't copy anything I've done. None of this was engineered. It might be wildly j- dangerous, but it's for a staircase in my shop, and think about it. it should be fine. Some of the woodworkers out there watching are probably thinking you haven't even put the first coat of finish on this and you only have Johnny for about another 24 hours. There is no way you can get this done or if you do, you faked it like those reality shows do. But I do have an ace up my sleeve and if you've seen some of my more recent videos, you already know what that is. But this is a new finish I'm using and this isn't sponsored at all. I've never been sponsored by any wood finish company. I know there's some rumors out there that Rubio or somebody has sponsored me, but no wood finish company sponsored me. Unfortunately, I'd love to get some free money, but more than I love money, I love using a really good product that is the best product for my project or my customer. And here's why this is so special. This is a LED cured finish. So I know this kind of looks like black paint, but it's just a black hard wax oil. They make all kinds of colors. I actually love their pure, just their natural color. And I kind of wish I would have used it on the treads, but I'll show you that later. But this black is super cool. It's going to be a really cool contrast with the treads. It is just really a wipe it on, wipe it off, hit it with a light, and it is cured. And I don't mean like ready for use in a week. I mean, it is fully cured basically instantly. You're in like a second that that LED light hits it. It is an incredible product. They make all kinds of different colors. I really, really prefer just the pure one for the most part, although I do love how this black looks here. I drove a bunch of five inch screws into the Think About It attachment bracket, which should be strong enough if you think about it. Then I added this Think About It moisture barrier to the underside of this to prevent any moisture from wicking up from the concrete. And now we are getting pretty close to attachment time. So this is what I really need Johnny for. As far as I'm concerned, he could leave after we get this attached, but I do need him for this part. Get the shot of this before it twists on us. <laughs> Look at that. Plum. Nailed it. The nice thing about not knowing anything about engineering is this is more than likely way, way overbuilt. And my dream is that someday an engineer comes over and sees this and just laughs at me and maybe makes fun of me a little bit about how over-engineered it is. And my nightmare is that that same engineer comes over and sees one little fatal flaw that I'd never even considered and tells me the next time the humidity changes, this thing's gonna crumble like one of those Chinese bridges. So hopefully it's more of the former and not so much the latter. I was extremely confident I had the perfect finish color for these stair treads. This is the Vesting Invisible Oil and it's supposed to kind of mimic no finish at all, and I thought it would look really, really cool on this. And Johnny was helping me buff it on, and he was kind of looking at it a little bit funny, and finally he's like, I would have probably just went with a natural oil. And I was like, no, no, this is perfect. It's going to look awesome. And the more of these I did, the more I started second-guessing it. So Johnny probably just worked his way into my head. But I think it looks okay, but I have a side-by-side -side I'll show you at the end of the natural oil versus this invisible oil. And... You can let me know what you think, but initially I was just so excited about it. And then by the time the project was done, I was really second guessing myself. I've got a few redundancies to lock these stair treads in place. One is the notch we cut in to mechanically lock it in there. Two is that construction adhesive that will stay permanently flexible so it won't crack as the wood expands and contracts. And the final point of attachment is four huge wood screws. So I think between all three of these should be strong enough. Think about it. I'm gonna take a quick second to thank the narcissistic psychopaths at Deckmate for ensuring every single screw gets a label because you don't just put a screw in unless it's got a label. So thank you Deckmate for letting me know every screw needs to have a tag torn off it. If anybody out there watching this video happened to watch my last video where I built the two end tables for charity, the results are in. And if you didn't watch the video, I don't blame you, but it was a pretty cool video. Basically, I built one table out of walnut and one table out of maple, but I dyed the maple one bright, vibrant blue. Long story short, basically because someone in the comments challenged me and I can't back down from a comment challenge. Anyway, uh, the walnut one did sell for more, but not that much more. It sold for 4,300. The maple one sold for 3,700. So we raised $8,000. Again, all of that is going to Make-A-Wish. And 
Funny little twist to it, the maple one, the blue one, I said in the video, I guarantee somebody from one of the coasts is gonna buy it. Somebody from New York or California would buy it. Nobody from the Midwest would buy this blue one. And I swear, just to spite me, someone from the exact center of the United States, someone from Illinois bought the blue one. So I'm really happy that it sold. I think it's a very generous amount. I'm actually thrilled with the amount that they sold for, but thanks to everybody that watched that video, shared it and put a bid in. If you are a little upset with me putting those four holes in each one of the beautiful stair treads, that's okay. I'm a little upset with myself. I just didn't trust my joinery to rely just on the adhesive and that notch alone. So put the four screws in and now I'm gonna have to plug each and every hole. And these are gonna look pretty good from kind of eyeball height, but there will be some noticeable plugs if you get your eyes down level with it, especially with those grains running across it. And I really did my best to line up the grain lines, but you can see Sometimes that grain goes at like at an angle. So even if it's perfect at the top or at the bottom, it's not necessarily gonna be perfect where you cut it off. So did my best. And at the end, I think that it was a viable solution, but again, just not perfect. Since these plugs aren't finished, they're obviously gonna be a different color than the finished stair tread. So after I got these pared down, I gave it a quick sand with the orbital sander across the entire top of each stair step and then added one more coat of that invisible oil. And I'll spare you having to see that whole process because that's all it was, just adding another coat. And there's how they look in the end. And you might be thinking, I'm only showing you the good ones. And if you think that, well, check this one out. And what about this one? Or this one here, that one? I think they all look pretty freaking good. Look at all four of these. So there you go. It's been almost two years since I launched this N3 Nano Finish. And when I first launched it, the only people that would buy it would be maybe someone that saw one of my videos and said, yeah, I trust this guy, I'll give it a shot. But since then, it's really kind of found its own legs and found its own home where people are buying it independent of my videos or not. And I highly encourage you to get on YouTube, search some reviews because there are plenty of independent reviews out there now. And I think those are the best tests because I can show you whatever I want you to see. I'm not gonna show you anything bad but someone else that's completely independent of myself, they're gonna give you the honest feedback because this really is not a cheap product and so it's not a decision I think someone should take lightly if they're gonna put it on their project in their house. So it's something I'm thrilled about, but do your own research. Again, N3 Nano. All right, here's the finished staircase, but here is the color I think I maybe should have used. Looks pretty cool. I think Johnny might've been right, but let me know what you think. And speaking of Johnny, some of you are probably wondering, Where's Johnny Builds? Why wasn't Johnny Builds putting the N3 on? Did you even finish the staircase like you said you would while he was still here? Actually, actually, no, we didn't. We got right up to the point of me filling the plugs before he had to get on his plane. So we got almost all the way there. And speaking of Johnny, every week, I like to give a little credit to people who make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your question or comment this week with Johnny Builds because I didn't pay him anything so I could hopefully at least get him a couple new viewers. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Should it be bouncing like that? It's bouncing? Yeah. Yeah, staircases, I think they're supposed to have a little bit of give to them so they don't break, so they actually have a little bit of spring. Oh, I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Think about it.